I wanted something where someone could push a button inside the house and signal me out in the shop. So we put together some components. For this we're making two boxes, a client side and a server side. Now the client side will basically have a button and the server side will have some LED lights and a speaker. When you push the button in one location, it will activate the light and the speaker in a different place and this will happen over Wi-Fi. Now, a couple of criteria for this project. First of all, no battery needed. USB powered, cheap components, not complex, small wood box, ideally laser cut. For both of these boxes we need a microcontroller and we're using ESP32s. These come with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth already built in, plus they're cheap at around $5 per board. So let's start with the client box. We're going to need a breakout board, an ESP32, a button and a Type-C breakout. And the only reason for using that is so that we can orient it however we want. We're also going to need a box, but more about that later. Okay, so let's take a look at the electronics for the client side. So here, basically just tapping into the 5 volt and the ground pin. The red wire is the 5 volt. Now, the ESP32 runs on 3.3 volts, but it will accept 5 volts and automatically convert it to 3.3 volts. Now, this is the one side of this project and you can hear the signal, which means that we've got the server side set up and connected as well. Okay, but before working on that, let's design a box to hold the client side. I'm using Aspire by Vectric to design before exporting it to the laser. This is the Xtool laser engraver, a new machine we're testing out. It cuts really fast and I love using a laser to prototype because it is so quick to make changes, you know, as opposed to like a 3D printer or something like that. We're using 8 inch plywood and the idea behind the design here is that all the pieces need to fit together so everything aligns. The solderable breadboard will screw into the bottom of the box. That way everything is nice and secure. Here you can see the holes. This means that we will have screws on the bottom. Okay, screws can scratch whatever surface the box is on, so ideally we need feet to raise it up a little bit. Also, we want access to the inside of the box even after it's put together. You know, what if something breaks, you want to be able to get in? Let's combine those two problems and make little wedge feet. This raises the box up, plus you can remove the wedges, get access to the box, works great. The wedges are tiny, another reason to use a laser engraver. It can cut really small things easily, whereas that could be a little trickier with a CNC. So here are all the pieces for the box, the sides, the little wedges and a bunch of round parts. The circles are all related to the button. The button is kind of the main part of this box and I wanted it rather large and basically sitting on top of the box. Next shot here you can see we added a grid with holes and this is so that you can see the red light inside to confirm that the board is on. Plus it looks kind of neat and will mirror the other box where we will have a speaker. The other thing here is the placement of the USB-C where you'll connect the unit to power. The ESP32 already comes with a USB-C on the board, however then you're stuck with that location so we added an external one and this location on the side here seems to work well. Also, you can see the lights shine through here. Now, to connect the larger push button to the smaller built-up button, we're using magnets and just hot gluing them in. And these are just basic cheap magnets, which work really well for this. Now, for the server side, we're going to need a solderable breadboard, an ESP32, a Type-C breakout, three LED lights, a speaker, and some wires. We're going to model the box design on the client side and just make some modifications. So taking the speaker here and seeing how high does this box need to be in order for the speaker to fit properly. It needs to be a little bit higher than the other box and we also need to attach the speaker properly. Okay, I've got some ideas for how to do that. Let's cut out our material. For this box, the bottom will be the same since it also will have the same solderable breadboard which will screw in um, and it will have the same wedge system. Where it differs is connecting a speaker and the holes for the LED lights. Now the speaker had nice mounts but we didn't want to screw through the top of the box. Instead wanted to screw from underneath but in order to do that we need to build it up a little bit. So we made these 
little frames, I guess you can call them. They're basically squares with holes in the middle and they have index pins that will connect. That way everything will line up perfectly and nothing will slide around when you glue this in place. And then we can glue a couple together and get the perfect height for the speaker to mount properly. Um, and we also have holes for the sound to escape in a, in a grid pattern on top. So we tested a variety of speakers for this project, a couple of old ones we had on hand, but ended up ordering a really small little speaker on Amazon because it fits better in terms of size. And the volume on all of these speakers have been pretty much the same. Then we need space for the lights to stick through in the front and kind of nice with the three LED lights. Obviously you could have just used one light, but with multiple lights, you're able to create a little pattern um, that, you know, get your attention. And of course, none of this would work without the code. So the first thing the codes do for both of these units is to log into the web to connect to the Wi-Fi. And on the server side, it sets up a server. So basically it is waiting for a signal, like listening. It wants someone to type in the IP address. And typing in the IP address is either pushing the button or we can actually type the IP address into the web browser. So it's like a website. And it says right here, program executed. A couple of things that I really like about this project. It's simple and basic, but really useful. Sometimes you want to be notified and not through a phone. So these can be placed anywhere as long as they're within Wi-Fi. It's great for kids contacting adults to let them know that they're needed uh, when they're not right there. Obviously, we're using a button to activate the signal. However, you could just as well use different sensors. So lasers, temperature, pressure, etc. So you could be notified if someone is on your property or something else is going on. Check out the website for the code, all the parts. We also have plans for the box. And as always, all plans are free for patrons $5 and up. Link in the description below. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, which I'll address in a follow-up video. Thanks so much for watching.